Next up is rectangle uh, tecta with a little white strip representing snow and four little pine trees. The white strip along the bottom is half an inch by three inches. because we have a 12 inch square glass, we end up with three nice pieces. So that is two and a half by three. Nope, I'll have to get more. I'll be back. For this one, I'm finally going to try using this to cut angles. So you need to lift up the end and then turn it. And I'm thinking probably a 45 would be way too tight for these. I don't have a protractor up here, but definitely a 45 is too much. So let's give it a try and see if we can hold it. And it looks like about a 70 degree angle give or take. So we'll lock that into place, which may be easier said than done. Oh, there we go. Double check. Yeah, that looks good. Alrighty. And then let me get some green glass. Okay. Do not know how this is going to work. Uh, the bases are about half an inch, but I think I'm going to cut it about an inch and a half just to see how this works. Okay. You're going to see during the video that the color of the glass is going to change back and forth. What I used and filmed horribly. I don't really have a lot of that left, but I do have this nice sheet um, of green swirly. It will also solve the problem of I don't really want 12 of these. So I'm going to do th three new ones to demonstrate how to use this to cut angles, and um, I'm going to use different glass. Hmm. And this thing, the angle cutting feature is really weird and wonky, and I don't want to use a huge amount of this glass. I definitely want to start with a strip and this has deep ridges so cutting may be trickier. Nope. This cutter is amazing. That definitely would have given me a hard time. And on this it just cuts beautifully. I am also going to use that gorgeous brown that arrived while I was filming the last video for the stems. is just amazing amazing stuff the gorgeous end of this i'm going to use for the next one the freeze infused snow globe because the pine trees actually will have more substantial trunks so i'm going to cut that gorgeous section off and put that aside maybe i'll just cut it right in half And use this for these little trees where not a lot of it is even showing an eighth of an inch so they're more consistent 
Um, there are stops that come with this to hold it in place. I find sometimes just using another piece of glass works just as well. Oops, that's way too much. That should be fine. And this one doesn't have a clear green. This one has a much clearer green, so I have to be careful of which direction I cut it. This one doesn't. It just, in general, looks like wood. So it will be fine if I do it this way. I always have to remember that I've got the tools in the proper position. That didn't work at all. You want it to look like this, like a little smile, and not like this, which is upside down. You'll notice this one, I was so regularly cutting it upside down that I actually put a mark to show me where it needs to be in the proper position. And then to do the length of the three little stems, I'm gonna use my nippers. can't make accurate cuts that small. And actually it's not three stems, it's four. Okay, didn't work. I ended up with a whole lot of wasted glass and nothing is really the size that I needed to be. So I think I'm going back old school using my green self-healing mat and my pistol grip cutter. So I don't waste this whole sheet of glass trying to get 24 little Christmas trees. So I'm finding if I take a right angle and just line it up crooked, I can then cut across and end up with a tree that's pretty much what I want. Clearly I need more practice. I'm gonna demonstrate this cutter making larger trees. I don't think it really works well for the tiny trees I was trying to do for the ornament. So I'm going to find a spot on the glass, which I think would make a pretty tree. You need to lift up using the protractor and move the arm so the protractor lines up. Protractor lines up. And I want it to line up so that my tree will be about that big. And this becomes the first of my difficulties, because if you look at the other end of this thing. There is a little pin that interferes with placement. So it seems as though you have certain angles that work really well and certain angles that won't. And my first inclination would be to cut that little pin right off, but I don't really want to do that until I get better at using it the way it was intended to be used. It was clearly designed to do more of a regular argyle type pattern than something like I'm trying to do with it. So I find if I set the end stop off the edge, the pin won't interfere <clears throat> and it will hold it in place. Once you get it started, then you can just flip the glass over and over and you'll get the cuts that you want. It's just getting that first one that's really challenging. For me, I'm sure people use this thing all the time and have no problem with it. Oops.
I'm gonna just flip it. Now going back to the smaller trees. You would do the same thing, but you're just gonna cut a smaller tree. But first I want to get this cut in half so that I'm not wasting so much of it. Although you would think you'd be able to do this. <laughs> you'd think. Sorry, just hit the camera. Let me get this in half. And I've reset it to the 75 degree angle. And I can end up with a bunch of different sizes of little trees. So let me see if I can get the trees I need. Without wasting too much glass. Yeah, for bigger trees, perfect. Great, love it. For the little tiny trees for the ornament, I'm better off, old school. Okay, I've got all the trees. Wasted half of the glass that I had trying to get those few trees. Whole lot of scrap, but they're done. And I get to take a break in the middle because the UPS person just dropped off my glass order. So let me take you along while I open it up and take a look at what I bought. I love Glass Underground. Great supplies, great prices. Oh dear, a circle cutter. I don't think I'm going anywhere near that today because I'm not doing a really good job with cutting. These are two stencils because in addition to fusing glass, I also like to etch glass. Sometimes I etch and then fuse. Sometimes I just etch things like wine glasses and whatnot. More glass tap, and if too much glass tap. They had tea towels, which was kind of interesting. I'm not gonna use that for glass, but I thought for um, jelly making, and it was really odd to see them have tea towels, but they did. And then it looks like I have a few pieces of glass. I picked up a mold cleaning brush. Only one of these dragonflies. I don't know what I was thinking. It's a gorgeous little water jet with iridescent blue wings. I should have gotten more than one. I had a great sale on molds, and I thought this was adorable. A texture mold. So I bought that. Cookies for Santa. And then Snowflake, because I have a lot of little four-inch, um, like, trinket dishes that I was going to slump and never did. And I thought, oh, how cute is that? And then the Color de Vera um, maple leaf mold. Again, I'm going to make a little few dishes with that. A weaving mold. So when I finally get the Gen Ken kiln working, it has a really nice base. So I'll be able to do much larger pieces. And then I have, I believe, one piece of glass. This was what I was planning to do the pine boughs with. It's woodland brown opal. I just thought that was absolutely gorgeous, but I'm already done with those ornaments. So I will have to find something else to do with this but I am sure, look at that beauty, something will come to me with this gorgeous wood textured glass. And now break time is over. So it's time to assemble these pieces.
For this one, I used much larger Frit for the snow. So I need to go into my Frit bucket. Some of this is Frit that I purchased, but most of it is Frit that I made by just chopping up scrap. And I used a little bit of dichroic and a little bit of white. So I just need to find the right size because I have things that are very powdery, which I will also need because along the strip, along the white strip, you can see there's a little bit of frit in there to add a little bit of sparkle to the snow. These look like about the right size. I'm going to have to pick through because some of these are really large, but I'll pick the smaller ones from here. And then the larger ones from here, because I don't have the right size of uh, Tacroic Frit. And then here is the powder, which will add a little bit of sparkle to the snow. And this one is a kind of just in case. It's the white that's a little, it's sort of in between the powder, which I didn't take out, and then this one. So if I need a couple of snowflakes that are just the right size, I can dig through these jars. start by laying down just a little bit of a bed of really thin glass tack. I don't want to do one dot of glue at a time, so I'll just lay down a little thin layer. It'll be enough to hold them in place while I put them in the kiln. And that's really hard to see. I'm going to put them right on the table. And I want dots that are noticeable just because of the look of this one but not giant like this would be too big so I'm just going to dig through I'll find the dots I want some dichro dots. And I make these up, I just pound it uh, with a hammer and a Ziploc bag. So I end up not getting metal shards. If you have a frit pounder, you then have to worry about straining out any possible contamination. I just use a hammer and a Ziploc bag. Actually a bunch of Ziploc bags because they tend to break through pretty quickly. Uh, not a lot of dichro on these, so a lot of them are going to show up as just clear, but that's okay. You just want it to look snowy, and this is not a very realistic, obviously it's kind of a pop art kind of snow, so big is fine. Sometimes I go in and do dichro dots instead of just putting in the frit. This firing schedule I have is really nice in that it smooths things out, but it doesn't obliterate everything. I don't like full fuse for most of these little pieces because I want them to keep texture. I don't want them to get super flat, super mushy looking. And so I'll just doll these up with some snow and then put a layer, again, just put a thin layer of glass tack because I just want to hold everything in place while I carefully transfer it to the kiln. So I'm not gluing on individual pieces. I'm just going to try to keep it from making a huge mess and falling off when I'm transferring it. And I do have to be careful. And this will add just a little bit of sparkle to the band of the snow at the bottom. If 
I got anything where it doesn't belong, I'll just move it closer to the band of white with my tweezers because I don't want little bits of snow in the background. I only want those big, almost silly looking size snowballs for this ornament. So I'll just move everything out of the way. And then these will be ready for the kiln. I always scoop up the frit when I'm done and put it back in the containers because I do a lot of little tiny work and these little tiny pieces are perfect. Um, I'm just about out of good snowball sized white so I'll need to get myself into the scrap bin and pound out some more frit. But for now these look pretty good. Um, I may do a little bit more touch up and then get them into the kiln but I may just put them in the way they are. I usually use thin fire on my shelves, but uh, I bought a, an entire package of six by six, which is not quite big enough for my kiln shelves. So I, I realized that I had in the past purchased some papyrus sheet and had not used it. So this is what I'm using this time. It works really great. Very easy to pick up the items once they're done. Does not leave as much dust, does not leave residue on the piece. So I really like this. And um, that's what I'll be using to line my shelves. These are a little bit larger, so I only get four per shelf. But because the firing quality is so different between the, the top shelf of my kiln and the bottom shelf, I don't want to put the next two on the top shelf. I really like the level of fuse that I'm getting one shelf on the bottom so i'm going to run the kiln twice to make this ornament with that knowledge if i were to do it again i would make the ornaments a little bit smaller because i don't really want to run the kiln twice but it's that's the way it's going to be today